This session is brought to you by Zurich Life and Investments. These guys are one of the last true independent life insurers going around and they're Swiss, so you know their stuff is solid. These guys really understand and believe in the value of advice, which is why they invest in programs like this one and partner with groups like XY Advisor to help drive the positive evolution of financial advice in Australia. Their team are just really good people as well. So if you haven't already connected with them to learn more, check out their website or speak to your business development contact. This session is also brought to you by Sun Super. They're one of the fastest growing profit for members or industry funds in Australia. They were the very first of these funds to partner with advisors and they've got functionality where you can actually link to your client's Sun Super accounts and charge advice fees through the fund, as well as a number of uh, tech innovations to make it easier for you to work with your clients. They've got great investments, they're really, really cheap, and their team are just generally legends. So if you haven't already connected with Sun Super, give them a shout, because they're doing some really cool stuff. Okay, so what was hilarious about this is we tried, what, three times to try and start the podcast with uh, Adrian opening his beer. Well, it worked the first time. <laughs> and then you uh, followed it up with a bunch of curse words, shall Whoa. we call them? You know when you got a beer and it just sort of, it's a little bit tussled and it has a bit of a fizz on the top? You just, you know, it's spilling on your shoes. Ah, that's a very good point. <laughs> it didn't quite crack the way you wanted it to? No. Oh, actually, it cracked really good. I reckon we can actually release that as part of the... Like maybe the clothes as a stuff. blooper. Oh, I think we've uh, we recorded enough we bloopers enough live on air. I think, um, <laughs> Em, I think you you could spend like a week at the end of the year, maybe just pulling together um, a few of the uh, best of me, probably. Adrian's <laughs> bloopers. The best of Patty. It's gonna be it's gonna be probably about fifteen seconds long. There's not too much best, mate. <laughs> maybe, okay, the worst of Patty. <laughs> So, uh, so today, this week, uh, over beers, it appears, mm. uh, we have M, Emily. That's me. Yeah. Community manager. Community manager of XY. Yeah. Killing Does a it. ripper job. Yes. Uh, we're, you're going to get flown around Australia this year, mm. representing Team XY at, at the events. We're over in Perth. Mm. Is it in April? We're in Perth. Yes. April. That's, April. That's, yep. that's the big one. I'm, mm. I'm really looking forward to it. We've got Sydney. Sydney. What's the date Feb. on Sydney one? 22nd. 22nd of Feb. Thursday. No, Feb. 22nd of February. February. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, yep, yep. We're still locking down March in Brisbane. March in Brisbane. Right. Yeah. And it's going to be good. Perth, April. Perth, April. Okay. Yeah, Perth. Like, we, we, we start the year with a budget, but I think the flights to Perth will knock us out. Um, so oh, that's... yeah. <laughs> yep. We'll be on the red eye or whatever the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, the red eye. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so um, uh, tell us a little bit about your background, Em. I get asked this all the time because I tell people what I do and they're like, okay, you know, and I always just tell, start with saying it's a mixed bag. So let's just take it back a little bit. So I graduated school, yeah. went straight into uni because it was kind of like, if I don't go to uni, what am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. And ended up doing a business degree. So I majored in finance and economics and actually enjoyed it. And then after that, I spent two or two and a half years working for a financial planning firm in Townsville. Cause I'm from North Queensland originally. Mm -hmm. Don't hold that against me. And then <laughs> after, well, while I was doing that, I, d I enjoyed it, loved what I was doing, but I just had the bug. I was had the bug to go traveling and I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I ended up heading off on a one-way ticket to South America. Boom. Mm -hmm. in two that single, like, I didn't have to hear anything else she said when we, when we first met. When that she time. said that, I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't care how good she is or anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I've, done, I've done the one-way ticket to South America as well. When, when were you there? I left May 2014. Wow, so World Cup recent time. as well. Mm. I'm so jealous. I did it in like 2010. Ugh, yeah, so long ago. It's generally a good... Um, like anyone that's done that, there's a certain uh, life perspective that they've got. Totally. You just you, you bounce straight away. And you haven't finished yet by, by any means. No. Mm. Oh, I think the bugs kind of have contracted it and it's like nothing's going to cure that, I suppose, like yeah. to oh. travel and stuff, of, you know, whenever you go. Oh, it's pretty permanent. I know, Clay's, mm. Clay's I think his is diminishing. He's lost it. I'm, tr I'm trying to wind it down, ha having kids. But 
we, 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 well, getting married and, and doing that whole family thing. But it's the but, next phase. But anyway, so, so, you, so you go to South America, one-way ticket. Yeah, one-way ticket and backpacked through South and Central America for seven months. Um, yeah, and then went up to Canada, worked there. Um, probably one of the best three months of my whole time away was buying an old 40-year-old RV with three other friends. Wow. It's three grand, so 750 bucks each. Slept six people, kitchenette, the whole shebang. Damn. And we finished up a winter season in Canada. And then, yeah, spent three months cruising down the Midwest and then back up the West Coast. So Coachella, Grand Canyon, all the national parks. Like, it was ugh, crazy. It was definitely one of the best three months of my life. And then wow. back up to Canada, did a bit more traveling around. I, oh, I worked on a ranch in Montana for six weeks because the engine in our van blew up and Did we couldn't get guns? back up to Canada. Yep. Shotguns. So so you stayed on this ranch? Yeah. That's cool. So, a, 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 like like herding cattle? No. So I did a lot of mowing because <laughs> <laughs> it just come out of the winter. But I met this couple at a pub. So quick story. On the first way down, like we crossed into Montana and we had a big, like we stayed at a truck stop and we had to get to Yellowstone and it was a, it was a long way. So I thought, okay, let's break up the trip. And... I sort of found this little town. I was like, it looks like an old Wild Wild West town. Whoa. Let's stop there. We'll camp there for the night, check it out, and then head off to Yellowstone. We get into this little town, and it's literally like one street. It's coming out of winter time, and this is a summer town, so there's nothing open, nothing. It's dead. And so we've pulled our van up. It's about 12 degrees Celsius outside, and we've been traveling all day. So we're in shorts and thongs like we're Australian. That's all we know. And so we get out. We thought, oh, we'll just do a little lap of the street. Super cute and really old school, like, you know, the old saloon doors and stuff like that. Yeah. And we heard music coming from somewhere. And we're like, where is that coming from? And the only thing open was the pub. And so we, you know that scene out of a movie where you, someone walks into this old school bar and he's not from around there. The music stops, and the lo- the four locals. I and hope the it wasn't a Tarantino movie. <laughs> and, and and the bartender like, and they all look. <laughs> yeah, music stops. Music yeah. stops, and we're like, hi. And there's six, six um yeah people and the and the guy. And so we're kind of like walking in our shorts and thongs. They're all in jeans and boots and stuff. Ordered four Budweisers and started playing a game of pool. And then about two or three minutes later, this couple in their early fifties. Um, swung around from the bar and they're like, well, y'all don't look like you're from around here. And we're like, <laughs> nope. And then that just instigated this conversation. We were there for two or three hours and they just were fascinated by what we were doing. They're like, so you quit your jobs? You quit your jobs? Because like my <laughs> partner at the time was a civil engineer. I was a fi- had a finance degree and they just couldn't believe that we would quit our jobs up and leave and go traveling for that long. And they're like, do you work? Like, what do you do? Like, they just couldn't believe it. And so long story short, we ended up, have, they said, invited us back to their place for dinner. And we were like, hell yeah. yeah. And um, didn't think anything of it. And ended up being great because they had two sons who were similar ages to us. So they were just relating it to that. And we ended up, and we had told them in conversation that the fan, uh, the furnace in our van was broken. Like the heating was broken. It was going to drop below zero that night. Oof. So we were just going to like, just snuggle like blankets puppy dog eyes yeah like, uh, body heat you know and then um <laughs> and they said look we know we only just met y'all but we don't want to be weird but we've got two spare bedrooms like you're welcome to stay and we we're like thank you and oh. so we ended up staying and anyway the guy was kind of semi-retired but he managed a ranch um for a dude for, that was in florida like super super wealthy and he was showing us all these photos of like infrared cameras of um um, massive bears and bull mooses and just all the stuff that went on there. And Whoa. he sort of said, yeah, like, you know, bull mooses, huge, massive, like, like they're, a car. They're, like, you would not want to, you wouldn't want to hit one with a car. Like, I know who's going to lose. It's the car. What? And um, he said, you know, if you guys are ever looking for work, like, you know, hit me up. And we kind of sort of fobbed it off because our plan was to get back up to Canada. And then on the way around, back up towards Canada, we kind of realised that we had about six weeks up our sleeve because we had li- work lined up on a farm in Canada as well. And and we're, anyway, we got to Portland in Oregon and we were supposed to get back up to Vancouver eventually and sell the van and we had some interest on it. And we woke up this morning, we are going to go check out Columbia Gorge quickly and then head off to a friend's house and 20 minutes into the drive and the van blew up, the, the engine blew. Oof. And we are like... Oh, rough and so that was on a long weekend as well and so anyway we um yeah decided well 
okay, that's done. Let's switch up the plan. We're not going to Canada. So my partner and I hired a car and crammed everything we owned into it. Snowboards, camp gear, everything. Like the front seats could go like that, like a millimeter. And so we drove overnight. So I drove overnight to a truck stop where we had stayed originally on the first way down, just slept for five hours like this, and then got up (laughs) and cruised on to the town, which was an hour away from where these guys lived. Had been in touch with them, but had no idea where we're going to live, no idea what yeah, we're going to do for work, yeah, no idea what yeah. we're going to get paid. We just went out on a limb and yeah. said, "Stuff it, let's just go." Yeah. And anyway, ended up being there for five or six weeks, and it was the best five or six weeks ever. We ended up getting put up in this townhouse, which had like, and we okay, we've just come out of living in a van, twenty six <laughs> feet of space with six people, <laughs> to a bedroom with a sh- corner spa bath in the ensuite. Still. Yeah, and we're going. Oh my god! First of all, what is what are we going to pay for this? Um, and he goes, look, he goes, you know, I didn't even really want to charge anything, but you know, I got to. If you guys just look after the place and like, let's just call it two hundred bucks between you for the whole time you're here. So twenty dollars each a week to live in this townhouse. And we said, how did we do? How did we manage what this? And then yeah, ended up working hell? for them. And they are, they're like my mom, my Montana parents. I get a Christmas present, a birthday present every year. Stop wow. it. Every year. <laughs> like I still keep, in, I Skype them on Christmas. Like they're literally my other parents. That's it's crazy. So cool. And that was from literally walking into a bar and meeting them. Like th- this random couple that just sparked up conversation. It's definitely the best part of traveling. That reading. 100%. Like I, I, I kept a blog when I was away yeah. and I've recorded it, a few little videos. Is it still on the interwebs? Oh, it's out there. It's kind of like paused at the moment. Was it written on MySpace? And then... oh, I'm I'm a little past that. Oh, okay. It was, was, every... <laughs> it was um, but yeah, and uh, there was I had so many stories like that, and and whenever someone said, um, what was your no, they'd ask you, well, they asked me, what's where's your favorite place mm. to travel to? What was your number one destination? And I think I went to about sixteen countries, so it was really hard to pick one place. Jeez. So my thing was always, it was never the place, mm. it was always the people. Like Absolutely. that was without a doubt the best thing about traveling and that's what I would tell people like exactly so yeah, yeah for me yeah and same with the people I worked for in Canada on their farm like that was incredible and yeah so it was just this massive like it's super cliche and whatever but traveling like changed my life like perspective and all that sort of stuff and then so you get back from that did you start in financial planning as a power planner after that all happened no before oh okay so you this do your degree that, yeah do your degree Get into a, finance, yeah. yeah. Start at power planner, then mm. drop it and go traveling. Yeah, gotcha. Because and it's not that I didn't enjoy that work. I actually really, really liked it. But just I, th- I was at that point in my life where I'd been studying flat out. I didn't, didn't have a gap year. I was just itching to go. Like, totally. and I just turning up to a desk every day from nine to five was just killing me. And I was like, I don't want to wake up in ten years time and think, I wish I had gone and done it. Like, why didn't I go and yeah, do it? It, it, it? The moment that your cubicle, so to speak, feels like a, uh, a cage, yeah. you, you know there's no coming back yeah. from that point. And by, by no fault of, like, the people I was working for or totally. anything, it, it, I could have been doing anything, but I was just had this burning desire to go. Yeah. And so I, that was all I could focus on. And then, yeah, when I booked the ticket, I was like, holy shit, I'm actually going. Yeah, that's a crazy moment, hey? Yeah. I actually I actually call travel, like, career advice. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, I, like, I've had people that I've, I've got people, clients have come in, and they're, like, they're going about not really liking their job, and they're still quite young. They're sort of yeah. not really, don't have too many commitments or anything. I'm, like, just... Travel. Just go. Spend, spend so, it. In fact, my Just. greatest uh, uh, success as a financial planner, uh, like emotionally, was when I was able to help uh, a client go from I'm working and I'm stuck in this job, regardless of the size of the in- income, to oh, now I'm living overseas. Hmm. And that happened a handful of times. Yeah. And I loved it. It was... It was it, you know, it's only for two, three years, maybe. It might turn into 20. Mm. But even if they just do it for a short amount of time, it's, it. I mean, it's like the greatest thing you can help someone achieve, I, I think. It's 10 times more valuable than university, that's for sure. Traveling, yeah, is the number one thing like that you could do and it just reminded me of that. Um, oh, we wouldn't have she wouldn't have gotten the job if she hadn't traveled. So, well you know what? Like <laughs> for example. <laughs> yeah. She probably wouldn't have accepted the job if we hadn't have uh, traveled ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> she wouldn't be on the same page, exactly. right? 
But it um Yeah, it wasn't like a traditional interview. She's like, Who are these guys? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sat down for coffee and then it was South America. Oh well, South America oh, oh, again, well, again. We all have to work together then. <laughs> it's done, it's sorted, that's higher job description, tick. But it um it's funny we talk about that, like this is a bit of a random story. I don't think I've told this one before, but do you know what Toastmasters is? Like public mm-hmm. speaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do go to Toastmasters, love it, loved it, haven't been since but I won a competition. What? And um the it was um, table topics. So table topics is like off the cuff. So you get up there and they tell you a topic there and then and the time it goes and you've got like two minutes to just speak. Yeah, right. And so I ended up doing this competition. I won it in our little group in Cairns and then I had to go to this bigger regional one and and I was packing it. I was so scared. And then <laughs> and there was five of us and there was I knew some of the other speakers were like really good people. And I get up there and I'm like, oh, my God. And then the topic goes, when all else fails, Emily Blanche, when all else fails. And then you have to speak. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> when all else fails, pack a bag and go. And then I just boom went on this rant of like, <laughs> traveling is the best thing you'll ever do. I told the story about the van or whatever. And yeah. everyone's just like, oh, my God. And um, <laughs> I got off there and I was just so stoked that I didn't trip up. I just, it all came out. And then I ended up winning. And then, yeah, two people come up to me after. They're like, that was amazing. Like, she, one lady was like 50-something and she goes, oh, you know, I never travelled when I was your age, but I'm only I'm doing it now and, you know, better late than never. And, yeah, it was, oh, so many people came up and said stuff like That's that. That's so cool. one thing. Yeah. Totally. Mm. Yeah, it's... I, 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 I mean, uh, I don't think because normally uh, Toastmasters is for people who can't talk I, I, well, I don't feel it's like f- that's that's an issue for you well no for me it was well, more what about happens after Toastmasters oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It, we're yeah. she graduated oh, you, didn't, you, didn't you didn't see me before you didn't see me before what you were some timid mouse beforehand <laughs> were you Bullish. no but it's the technique of like I talk fast. I'm mm. probably talking fast now, actually, because right. yeah, when I get excited about things... You're actually just slowing things, you down on yeah. the mic at the moment. That's I have a habit of, like, I just need <laughs> to get it all out. Yeah, exactly. Actually, for those out there who are still listening and she's talking too fast, there's a, a slow down button on the, uh, the Stitcher and the iTunes. Uh, <laughs> Half speed. And, <laughs> and then I'll talk about like, the octave drop. And then for me and Clay, you might just want to speed it up to double time. So well, you get past us. <laughs> get back to Emily. Get back to Emily. Oh, well, I don't think I would end up doing what I'm doing now with you guys if it wasn't for that like in some respect like I'm going so like philosophical and cliche here but like traveling taught me to like not waste any time doing stuff that doesn't get me excited like Mm. and people freak out about change like I have no problems up and moving or totally doing something completely left field like even when I moved down here last year so I left I was leaving Cairns January last year and I spent three weeks, packed everything up that I owned in my little three-cylinder car and spent three weeks driving from Cairns down to here and, like, awesome. camped along the way, caught awesome. up with friends. Um, but people were like, oh, so you're moving, so you've got work lined up, you've got a job. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't have a job? I'm like, no. I'm like, I just want to get down there. I'll sort it out. Yeah. And people were like, God, I could never do that. Because your sister was living is that is it yeah is she's down story? here now yes, yeah yes, so yes. she moved down first to study in sydney yep and i've got family um so i'm in wollongong by the way um so all my dad's family are there so i've visited plenty of times before but never lived there dylan is just going woo. <laughs> <laughs> actually i was just <laughs> speaking to dylan today about the event in february like maybe we can um carpool or something up there <laughs> although you guys are gonna go say um we, so we've organized the wollongong uh event. XY advisor gonna, event. <laughs> we've moved the city we've shifted ones. it yeah. from sydney to wollongong now guys let's do it <laughs> yeah we'll come down it's super nice down there it might even be better than coogee no, I'm just kidding. Oh, it's kidding. Stretch. It's a Scarborough <laughs> Hotel, that whole yeah. th- rule. Yeah, mm. yeah, right, because the beach and everything's super nice. nice. But, but yeah, like, it's, yeah, I don't think I would have ended up doing this stuff with you guys if it wasn't just from, like, chance this and yeah, yeah, doing different yeah. stuff and just, like, trying things. I don't know. Well, I mean, ultimately, XY is just a hobby that uh, got out of control. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we definitely need uh, uh, people with enthusiasm, which uh, you don't lack thereof at all. So, uh, look, uh, this is fun. And, and, and we've always said we will just continue to do it for as long as the events bring value, that the podcasts bring value, that everything is worth doing because it's fun and, and it's valuable. And the moment it stops being that, we'll, we'll just stop. 
Or just change it up and shift it up so that you're keeping it oh, fresh. Oh, pivot. Maybe we should pivot. Pivot. pivot but We're like, mm. oh, we've had feedback. Um, we love the idea of the podcast. Just the guys that are on it every week. Can you swap them up? <laughs> <laughs> just get rid of them. Just put Emily on every that week. That Emily chick, she's pretty cool. X, Y, uh, buys up <laughs> with Emily. Just uh, as a weekly topic. And then occasionally we get to we're, come we're, on. We're, Emily's start, suddenly just doing the podcast and we're, we're organising the events. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How does this even happen? <laughs> that no, well, that would be the downfall of X Five Wise if we were organising the events again. Yeah, so, <laughs> without gracious. Emily, oh, I'm sure I'd be there overseeing it. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, new logo by the way. Mm. Yeah, I like, it. We get, uh, I like was, it. Has anyone noticed? Have, no, like, we're not making a big deal about it. But it's, we're being subtle, like it's subtle. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, to be honest, we're probably just not sophisticated enough to uh, do a collective launch <laughs> and change all the platforms at the same time and make a big hoo ha. So, yeah. Although Emily could do that. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. <laughs> what are you doing next week? Oh, mm. a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, we got a bit of a new logo. Um, we've got a we've got a few things coming through. So. Mm. Yeah, the online um, uh, member portal, member mm. membership mm. site. It's going to be up. Yeah, training uh, thing. Yeah, that's, like, that's nearly done. I've actually been reading, looking at the course content. So yeah. a sneak peek for me. Okay. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's looking really good. There's some yeah really good stuff in there, and oh. very different, like very like so not just awesome. I don't know. Yeah, like different totally different categories like it will appeal to all sorts of advisors in different spaces and at different times and you know areas of expertise and stuff like that i wonder if you end up back in financial advice again because of this well it's like totally reignited my excitement that's why advisor has like inspired me to come back into financial advice (laughs) with an american accent (laughs) where did that come from you trying to imitate my montana accent (laughs) Jesus. Oh my goodness. No, but I well, I loved the vibe of this thing. Like that's why I even got on board. Like yeah. even as an I it's, We call it XY Buzz and Marbo. Like, well, I think this is what good for me. Like I always I look at it from a different perspective I guess to you guys. Like I'm always the outside person like Mm. You know, like when I when we first sort of met and That's got right. into, I kind of was like, I like, oh, what is this? And I was yeah, looking yeah, at the yeah. website and checking it all out. I'm like, man, this is so cool because it's <laughs> everything that I enjoyed about the industry when I was doing it. But in saying that, when I was working in it, it was way more traditional, like an old school, right? Sure. So mixing that up with this new, like, fresh vibe and like, I don't know, millennial esque kind of mm. thing about it. Mm. You know, that's what just captured me straight away uh, and 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 it's the it's that brain's trust it's often that's what people call you know when they're commenting on the um on the facebook group it's the brain's trust right yeah. it's it's mm. it's um because there are some old blokes on there and old, 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 older females that love to give you know like very detailed cool advice so it's it's not just all you know well, the phrase that we've used is psychographic oh. clay. It's a psychographic. Yeah. It's not a Yeah, look, even if that's accurate, I just don't even like the word. Is I've never heard that word. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's, it's like people that think the same. It's like, it's, so there's a whole lot of people. There's no. I just feel like the word is not very XY. Psychographic. <laughs> I think it, we it can feels, come up with something better than that. That it sounds feels lethal. Like, it, it sounds like some, the psych- like gonna com, I don't know, some we'll psychotic see. person yeah. drawing graphics. Like, well, we have had that actually. When you used to do the the graphics, that could. Oh, <laughs> stop it. But I get the point of what you're trying to say is that yeah, it's a wide variety of scope and backgrounds. But so everyone's bringing something different to the field. But yeah, in, in a roundabout way, but it's awesome. Like the vibe and everything. And you guys probably don't see it much, but I message people on Facebook and they message me and stuff. And yeah, nice. or when emails and things go out, like people reply. Like we get replies and they're like, mm. "Man, I love what you're doing." Like. So sometimes you don't realise... Remember when I emailed you that very first time about your blog? Yes. Because I was like, I know what it's like to write a blog and have no idea if anyone's even reading it. Yeah. You know? Which is yeah. why, because like my thing is customer service or mm. like client experience. Like mm. that's what I'm about. So mm. when I get amazing service, I want to tell them about it because yeah. sometimes you think they're probably sitting there going, is anyone even reading this? Like, <laughs> does anyone even give a shit? Like, yeah. And so when someone's like, hey, keep up the good work, they're like, oh. 
you think you know it, it kind of it motivates is, them to keep going it and is do amazing more. actually when you get that kind of feedback um and, and your speciality as you're saying is, is that is that client and customer experience um have we introduced you yet to michael back no okay no i've been waiting for this so i remember oh, you told me about him ages yes. ago and i was yeah. like yeah oh, this guy yeah so uh so michael back, brisbane event Brisbane, yeah, Backy, if you're listening, make sure make sure you're at the Brisbane event. Um, but he is he's what's a, what, what, how do you describe this guy? Because he would even oh, struggle to describe himself. Last year's well. described as the nicest guy in financial advice. Uh, <laughs> who gave him that award? <laughs> I think I might said it when I was interviewing on the oh, podcast. Okay, right. <laughs> But he, he, uh, he, I know he works with a lot of financial advisors, a lot of really top quality financial advisors, um, and he, 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 he just he focuses on that that client experience, and, and he's done a lot of work with us. We've definitely got to uh, connect you guys. Yeah, totally. The magic will just. Well, I watched that podcast of his. You interviewed him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That was before I was even like doing anything with the podcast, and I was no. like, whoa! I was like. That's totally yeah. I was just like, wow, resonating. Yeah, that was an interesting one, wasn't it? Because that, was cool. that would have reminded you of your times in. Because we were going into yeah. the employee space, and his his story yeah. of like he was kind of stuck, you know, working in corporate, and then he went travelling as well. And I'm like, yeah. and it and it wasn't until a bit later on because that's I I battled that for a while. I was like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Like, what mm. am I doing? What's my, mm. you know? And then, and he did the sort of same thing, I think. And then, um, and and it's when he was on a flight back or something, and he was, you know, kind of came to him or whatever. I was like, man, that's totally like me, or in some kind of roundabout way. Or it mm. made me realize that, oh, hey, you don't have to have it all figured out straight away, which is cool. But yeah, he was a legend. It makes me feel good about having it, having it, like edge over into like the employee side of things as well. What Not do you mean? Well, the it was a dual dual audience podcast. It was it was for oh, employers and employees. When you were speaking uh, with Michael yeah. on the podcast, because right. his thing was about the client experience. Yeah. Well, we, we were talking about the employee experience. So the mm. oh, on the right. employer yeah, yeah, yeah. side and yes. the employee side. True. Yes, that's so right. Sort of, and like, that was really good as well. Just his ideas mm. and things. I was like, man, it makes so much sense, but people don't think about it. You know, mm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. I I, I can't wait to interview him again. I think he's a valuable person for the whole industry. Um, he started out in something what's called uh, the social advisor. Yeah, I googled it straight after he mentioned it. Yeah, and so the social advisor is or is I know Baz is doing something else, or is it still under uh, the social advisor? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but Baz, so Baz uh, kicked off this company a few years back, and Mike was there from the from the very beginning, and they they really changed very quickly. I feel they were a big catalyst in taking where advice had been into where advice could go. Yeah, they changed the discussion. Yeah, they mm. definitely changed the discussion. Um, so Mike Mike's been a part of that conversation from from the very beginning. Yeah. So it's been. Uh, great to work alongside him and, and, and pick up his uh, his tips. I mean, he's just, you're just getting this massive plug today, Mike. <laughs> You'd just be loving it. <laughs> what's the, what's your best band account number? Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, Brisbane event. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Brisbane event, for sure. Oh, yes. They're the best. Like, last year, it was so much fun. It you was, loved it in Brisbane. It was so, you you the, can't shut up about the Brisbane. the one that you Facebook Live that I always hear about? No. Oh, this maybe. One. No, yeah, I did, actually. We were out at the bar after, and I thought it was oh, good. No, I did to share it. Well, That's how much I was you? enjoying it. I wanted to share oh. it with the rest of Australia. It's, uh, yeah, it was good. Good people up in Brisbane. And uh, they know how to have a couple of drinks and enjoy themselves. It's, uh, yeah, Brisbane's great. Yeah. It's... Uh, and and it's going to be good content as well. We've well, got a, what have we decided? Oh, we're still Brisbane. locking down venue, low date, location. Right. Uh, well, there was conflict as to whether being so close to Easter, you know, if people are not going to be around. Mm. So oh, this is Ben, isn't it? We can blame Ben for uh, being too attention to detail like well, that. We we're almost well, ready to go, and like you oh, can look at it two point. ways. It was maybe like a point. Sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna phone a friend in Brisbane and ask him if they actually care about public holidays or anything, or if it like the day before. Maybe it's a good thing the day before a public holiday because mm. then people so they don't just have to worry blow about work. out and they have to worry about the next day. 
Because actually, for the Brisbane Knights, it's probably good that there is a there's no work the next day. <laughs> the That's kind of what I thought. Year. That's what I was like. Great, it's perfect. People don't have to go to work the next day. Genius. Mm. Oh right. So the day that we were looking at was the day before. A- good mm. Friday. So it was a Thursday night, and then Friday's Good Friday. Friday is Good Friday. Yeah. Okay. But we're mm, still. So we're going to turn there. If if it is on that day, we'll turn there. Good Friday into a bad Friday, probably. <laughs> <laughs> a hungover Friday. It's your ex way. Eh? It's hilarious that alcohol uh, has has accompanied. Actually, it's not that unique. It, financial planning in general it, it is normally accompanied by a beer. I feel that's that's pretty typical. It's an Australian thing too. Yeah, you combine 100%. the two. Combine totally. finance. Combine Australian. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah, it's just such an Australian thing to. It's sort of the reason why I got off. into it um, because I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Most I saw all the events that happened, ar- happened around Brit- <laughs> happened around um, December, and I was like, "There was all these events, and like when you're young, you're like, well, they 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 pay for all the drinks, <laughs> and you're like, this is great.' Yeah. Like, Our first few years. So, what it- inspired you to get into financial planning? <laughs> the free <Andrew>? alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, I was very proud of my last December. I declined a number of events. Well um, done. I be- yeah, I believe you skipped one, didn't you? He hasn't shut up about it as well. I didn't go to one event. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> oh. mate. You still went to another 10. <laughs> that was a bit more than that. But, um, but yeah, anyway, that was a real appeal. So maybe that's the way we could market the industry to new... Well, in- <laughs> in- interestingly enough... I- and on that I- note, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, we're trying to put together something. Uh, uh, this is kind of like a this year I'm getting married, you know, hopefully, you know, it's try and start a family or whatever. Grow up. Basically, in my mid 30s, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to grow up. And so we're trying to put on an event, or not an event, but just like something to get together without drinking. And it's this big thing like, oh, we're going to do it. We're going to hang out and not drink alcohol, right? So, because with dudes, and I found maybe it's an Australian thing or maybe it's a guy thing. I, I, I don't quite know. But it's weird to hang out with mates and not drink. Mm. Like, unless it's breakfast after a big night, right? Which can still include alcohol. Which can. <laughs> Bloody Marys. But Yeah, but, yeah they're but great. It's, it's just kind of weird. Like, dudes don't typically get together, say, over brunch. Uh, Maybe it's just the people you hang out with. Well, potentially. So, so, so looking to do a, a, a thing, and, and so we're looking at things like uh, this digital golf in the city. So you hit it. But hit there's a, a bar there. <laughs> How long Ray, just told me, Ray just told me today there's a bar there. Is there? Uh, there's a bar. Oh. Which is why it was such a great place for him to meet with this dude. Oh, is he that, going? Uh, yeah, that's where he's going today. I didn't even know. That's yeah. a complete coincidence. Oh, okay. Golf in the city. God damn it. Yeah. Mm. Go- so golf in the city is something. Rock climbing. Rock climbing is another one, right? We're thinking about that these. Would be cool. We're thinking about these the events or things that we can do that don't involve drinking. They That's almost sick. have to be activities, activities. adventure activities. Activities. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Which is like weird, right? X Y buys a rock climbing. I- yeah. I'd be down. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there before. It's good. It's fun. Is it? It's f- so fun. <sighs> Really good. I feel like just drinking a beer is easier. <laughs> it is. I wonder, we could do an experiment and just go like, well, one XY advisor event without alcohol and just see how that goes down. Maybe we put mm. a poll out and people can shout ideas of what we Yeah, they're, they're going to be like, if any of the guys from XY are there and there's not alcohol, I'm not, not coming. No. It's a given now. We've set the, <laughs> set the standard. Well, we just won't be able to listen to the rant. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Adrian Blake going to be there? I'm out. I'm going to drink. Out. I'm going to drink through his comments. That's <laughs> so plenty coming up. Yeah, mm. plenty of alcohol. Um. <laughs> plenty of uh, yeah. So the education, the events, the podcast, obviously. Um, mm. We're looking to get some uh, quote unquote big names onto the podcast. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If anyone's like knows people that are like big. Or have like a bit of a name, maybe email Emily. Just so, hi. Totally. Hey. Well, I'm brainstorming. Like, I I'll know spend uh, a bit of time. old Malcolm Turnbull. He may be interested in the XY advisor. Malcolm in the Parliament, you're definitely uh, welcome to join us. Uh, Just throwing it out there. 
Yeah, Malcolm Turnbull. Um, uh, Scott Pape, the the Barefoot Investor. Ooh, that would be good. Is that his real name? Is that... Sorry, have I got I've his, never heard his real that, name. Have I, have I, I literally had to yeah, Google it. So. Scott Pape. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's mm. changed his name to the Barefoot Investor. Oh, so that's his legal <laughs> name now. Uh, I, I reckon he'd be great because he's obviously nailed that direct-to-consumer... Totally. Uh, ...angle, which is which would be great. Um, who else? Oh, what about... Um, wait, who's the treasurer now? Not Scott Morrison. Um, the uh, treasurer nader. Uh, Do you know? I don't even know. What's his name again? That's uh, appalling, isn't it? South African dude. Uh, easy, yeah. bud. That'd be... Oh, look, nice Joe sense. Hockey was the last one that I That'd knew That'd just be of. fun having Joe Hockey on. Okay, maybe. Joe Hockey, you, you can Actually, come on. Actually, because he's not in Parliament anymore, so... I think... Or at least on the back bench, they don't do much there, so... Um, Get him in. Get him in. Mm. Um, nice. Who else? What do you Emma? reckon, Em? Who would you like to um, hear on X5 Eyes, I don't know. Who's, I don't know why, but you know Carl off that morning show? Carl He's quite funny. Yeah, I we should get him. I wouldn't. Know. He'd be it wouldn't funny. be horrible. Like, I think if we take, um, when we were talking to Glenn James before, mm. Like he's he's taken people from like completely different, like out of the finance yeah. world, and he's translating that to like financial planning and like people's money and how they... Well, we've already discussed this, right? So Am's all over saying. it. Yeah. I, so I suggested, because we were talking about when you said the barefoot investor, I was like, okay, because we're come, you know, thinking of trying to get a bit of a list of who to con or get in touch with or who we would like to come on the podcast and stuff. And then, because ultimately you want to sort of relate it back to finance in some description. But yeah, I started thinking of finding people who are doing other like cool shit in Australia, mm. not necessarily in this space, but how we can relate it back. So mm. um, I, yeah, just sort of started Googling. Like Redfoo, and like... Red Foo, is it? You mean the dude like the singer with the glasses? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, lycra, and he does, so and he does. Is he comes in in his like little um, his lycra? Yeah, so much lycra. Oh, actually, no, we all got to wear lycra and do it. That's a... You just want an excuse to wear lycra, <laughs> yeah, and we play the song. Like, and you got to. It took two seconds to. <laughs> Mate, you wear lycra. YouTube's gonna love you. What about um? What about sporting legends like um? Shane Warne. Oh, yes. Warney. Okay, Warney, you're in. That would be yeah. good. Yeah. You're approved. You can come on. Yeah. You're approved. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sucks. don't know. Just email Emily, everyone out there. Um, any ideas? We'll, um, yeah. We're not afraid to pick up the phone and just see what's going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it would be cool to get some, yeah, really out left field people well eventually yeah i mean at the rate that we're going we're going to get through you know all the financial planners that we know you know within, <laughs> within a certain amount of time right so we're definitely going to start extending beyond the natural uh uh you know circles of influence so to speak mm. Mm. yeah but we yeah, have what glenn, glenn was saying about yeah people bring them in and then sort of translating yeah, it back like that idea like taking it's their cool. stories yeah and then yeah. Hey, this is what it relates to financial advice. Um, Patty, I'm interested, mate. You're uh, you've got this business on on the build with uh, Sean. Mm. Sean Green, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's um it's been on the boil for a while, mm. and it's uh, it's based on, I guess the a lot of the changes that have gone on in advice and accounting. And you've got, uh, yeah, you've got the whole accounting industry, which has traditionally been able to deal with clients around a broad range of topics and things like superannuation. And uh, the, ch the recent changes that advice has caught up in is also caught up accountants where they can't talk to clients about um, stuff that they used to talk to, like superannuation, self-managed super funds, uh, unless they're licensed. So there's a big gap in the market and yeah, we're looking to close it by bringing together advisors and accountants and uh, giving them a great a great uh, advice proposition to run with that can just sort of deliver value because there's a shitload of people that just aren't getting financial advice that have professionals but because the professionals haven't been able to find other professionals that they trust um, there's this blockage there's sort of like you sort of they might come across people but the client has to go and find out how to deal with a mortgage broker or a, an advisor themselves and that other professional will just say well I can't deal with you and it's just it stops there mm, it's a barrier yeah so you've got this client experience that's going really nice they may be great providing a great experience but 
it just it's not able to go to that next destination because they don't have a trusted destination. So we're looking to bring advisors into accounting firms and uh, yeah, I give clients a great experience, give accountants a great experience, help them share in the value of financial advice and uh, yeah, see where it goes. So you're connecting the dots between accounting and financial advice. Yeah, and and also the dots within financial advice because like I like guys, what I'm mucking around with to get to get that humming is like a, a lot of we talk to accountants and they're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to get licensed and stuff and like get advice happening in my business. I'm like, advisors can't even get advice happening in their business. Like it's. <laughs> Yeah, let alone coming from a different like <laughs> different environment like it's just it's well a, i get what you mean so compliance issues and whatnot yeah like oh and just the overall thing like there's a lot of moving parts in advice and it's no longer especially when you look at the one man band setup it's mm. too big for one person these days so like um what glenn like glenn's doing it's it's awesome what he's got going like for example what we were talking before but it's a lot of like if you look at um, one man bands and like how I've been the last few years there's always a trade off and the trade off means that you're never getting to that optimal setup for clients that optimal setup for your business and how you how you can grow and um, get financially rewarded for all the all the time you put into things mm. and yeah it just it's harder than it needs to be if you don't have a team around you and it, and that that's usually a scale thing and ability to sort of um, spend time on technology so i used to spend lots of time on technology and to sacrifice actually making any money in my business and now i got the opportunity to sort of channel it into a, a more scaled proposition and um yeah over time it might be available to other advisors but we'll see how we go so the idea is so you you, you and sean you've got this business what's it called uh well spark partners is the brand for Accountants and Spark Advice is the advice business. Okay. Um, so, uh, but just to be clear, they're not the same business? No, no, because I guess one's a, the Spark Partners is a brand and engagement piece, which we've been working on for the last six plus months, engaging with the accounting community. Yes. And Spark Advice is the client facing brand uh, where understood. advice is delivered under the license. So, you, Spark Partners goes into accountants and says, uh, let's let's give advice to your clients and then you 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 put in an advisor in the practice is that essentially how it works yeah it's a hybrid model um we've got two options where there's um well there's a simple referral model and that's probably a bit of a toe in the water option and then you've got um and then there's also like the full employed model where you've got a large mm. accounting practice where you can you go into a JV and you you drop the accountant, uh, sorry, the advisor into that practice yep. and give them all the support. But what we're rolling with, which is a bit in between, is a contract model for self-employed advisors. So with what I was saying before, in terms of the challenges of being a self-employed advisor and running the shop and and doing everything well, there's a lot of advisors out there that are fucking awesome, but just don't have the right infrastructure to really execute and deliver all the goodness that they can to prospective clients whether mm. it's they're awesome at executing but it, they spend too much time on it because they don't have the right support or they're awesome on the front end but they they struggle with and it's a it's a bit of both with everyone and um be able to close all the gaps for them and just let them see clients deliver awesome uh, value to them form great relationships uh, form relationships with the accountant and yeah everything's just humming so mm. then spark partners business plan is to get accountants and advisors, whether employed or self-employed, uh, and put them together, and then handle the back office SOA generation uh, meeting preparation. Is, is that is that the well, idea? Yeah, all that, but it's a bit more than that because it's also the the engagement piece. So it's like it's not about. So we're going. Well, here's your fee schedule. It's it's flexible. Here's here's what we do. We we can we can cover all these bases. This is the service proposition that comes with that. If a client is fits that mold, right. this is what happens after it. There's no thinking that needs to be applied to the service delivery. Right. And it's bloody good. You would hope so. Well yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've bloody spent enough that. time on it. That's right. Yeah. So Awesome, man. Well it sounds exciting. Yeah. It's oh, um something new. Something different. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. that no one's actually attempted at scale, at least, because that that's the that's what you're aiming for to to marry up advice and accounting. 
Well, they have done it. I guess the difference At is... At scale. Yeah, yeah, it's been done. Like, GPS Wealth just sold for, like, 20 million. Uh, so, yeah, the, yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. have done the matchmaking piece, and that's, that's something that can be done. But we're, we're sort of going a bit below that and going, what are the pain points of delivering advice and making sure, like, you develop a good advice practice? So, we're actually running the advice practice as well. Right. Because... Um, well, if you don't, then you can sell the business for 20 mil. So, why would you? <laughs> well, arguably, there's more value generated... <laughs> By actually having a, a system that works, that actually executes. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll invest if you don't have to do any executing. <laughs> oh, we've got a good group of people that do stuff around here. That's a, and we've got Sean. Sean. Uh, it will, we'll just constantly rest on Sean. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm toiling away on, on my project as well. So uh, hopefully sooner or later. I, I think I'm getting pretty close. Might even be soft launching next week. So... So we can talk about it? Or? Maybe. Eventually. 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 Mm. But it's, this space. Yeah, it's definitely exciting times. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well... I think 2018 is going to be a good year. Yes. it's mm-hmm. We've definitely bitten off a lot. Uh, the, the sheer load of uh, of events makes me uh, a little bit nervous. Yeah, we've got a bit of chewing to get mm. through. Mm. Just chomp on all the what we've taken in. That's yeah. Just... But, uh, you know, yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be a pretty good year. Oh, yeah. We've got Emily. She'll take care of it all. <laughs> Cutie manager. Yeah. Slash CEO. I remember yeah. when I did the first event, like, last year. Yeah. So, here's the list. So, um, yeah, like, just just, just go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Fish to water. Yeah. All you needed was the list. I was like, I knew that list would come in handy. We didn't follow it very well, but um, you've done a great job. You could foresee that it was going to come in handy for me. Correct. <laughs> yeah. We're just not very good list followers. Mm. <laughs> All right. Plenty well, time for that. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think uh, podcast. Is yeah. Up. Thanks for being on it. Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. I'm yeah. happy to. Stories. Float I hope whenever. we've inspired a few people to go traveling. Yeah. And... Mm. Sorry, sorry to the employers out there. Yeah. Who've got people just downing tools and walking out tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all right. It'll be for the better. They'll come back. Exactly. Exactly. They'll come back fresh, you know. Inspired. Yeah. New ideas. Yes. All, all the cliches. Yeah. Every <laughs> every cliche. Everyone. Perfect. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Cheers. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers.